Native Risk on Air. My name is Brian Terry, and I'm a senior developer advocate on the CloudFormation team, and I'm super excited about this next um, session. I'm joined here with my friend and my co-host. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, all. I'm Marie. I know we just saw you. We're, we're back in action right away. Um, I am a Partner Solutions Architecture Manager here at AWS, and I'm happy to be joined by our guests. Hi, my name is Raghura Sodabatina. I'm an Enterprise Solution Architect based out of Boston. Awesome. So today, I heard that we're going to be talking about Open Search and Samuel Federation. Right. So start off, what is Open Search? Yeah, Open Search is basically uh, it's meant for operational analytics, where uh, you can build a operational analytics pipeline uh, by using. Uh, it can be used for uh, two different use cases, mm -hmm. mainly for. Uh, observability, where you can see what is happening to your applications, right? That's where we call as a operational analytics. Also, you can do the log analytics, mm -hmm. and then also you can use uh, um, open search, Amazon open search for uh, website search, right? Instead of uh, the building your own search, it comes with the, all the necessary things. You just need to fed your data. Data will be stored as a JSON format, and then um, you can serve the customers, right? For the website search, log analytics, operation analytics, and also it does um, application uh, monitoring, all right? Mm. Uh, uh, what it means, like, uh, let's say you are running a website mm. and you wanted to make sure that your application is always stable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with uh, traces where you can track uh, your uh, application microservices, method by method, where it is taking uh, time, and also you can see if there are any problems, right? When you combine logs and traces, you can build complete observability of your application portfolio, right? You don't want your website is going down. Yeah. You <laughs> want to make sure that you see what is happening, right? Yeah. So that is where it comes, right? And OpenSearch uh, comes with a open search dashboard. Mm. We call it as, uh, earlier we call it as a Kibana. Earlier we call it as a elastic uh, search and then mm. Kibana, but now we are calling as a Open search and open search dashboard, where you can build a user friendly um, uh, dashboard. The dashboard could be your business metrics, where you want to track how your business is performing. Yeah. And then you can also build uh, some of the alerts, right? Based on the metrics, what you see, you can notify to uh, your support people in case of IT application operational management. And then business metrics, you can basically notify your business users based on what this, what you see it basically. Yeah, so I know you covered a lot there, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm excited because I know that there's a demo yeah. coming. Um, so yeah, what's going on with Open Search? What are we going to see today? Yeah, so what you are going to see, right, uh, Open Search, many customers are uh, using an external identity provider mm -hmm. like Okta, Auth0, Ping Identity, or Active Directory. They don't want to create a duplicates, uh, IAM users, and roles. No. That is where like uh, the SAML federation is a, uh, SAML 2.0 is a open standard. Mm -hmm. With that, you can use your uh, external uh, identity providers, uh, identities, to access uh, Amazon open search uh, dashboard. That's what I'm going to show the demo. So let me start the demo right now. Yeah, let's oh. kick it off, let's see. Yeah, uh, for the demo, this demo purpose, um, I'm going to use uh, uh, basically uh, Okta is an identity provider, and there are pre-requests. You need to have an AWS account, and then uh, we want to make sure that you launch uh, your OpenSearch cluster in uh, VPC, and then an uh, Okta account, uh, and then uh, one user and group. And this is the OpenSearch uh, uh, domain. Uh, I already created a domain uh, called a SAML demo, and then uh, in order to enable, you have to enable fine-grained access controls uh, in the cluster configuration. And then make sure that you launch your uh, uh, open search cluster in VPC because you don't want to expose to all other uh, users because it is your internal data. And right. so for people viewing this at home, this this all this information was in a blog post. So in a blog really post, easy yeah. To yeah, access. easy to follow a step-by-step -step procedure. Here I'm creating a sample user ID in Okta because just to demonstrate uh, how you can use uh, user and groups in the Okta to authenticate against uh, open search uh, dashboard. Here, uh, for Okta, uh, the user identity is basically email. Mm -hmm. So uh, the email, I'm putting like a saml.demo.gmail, demo2.gmail.com. 
just an example. Mm -hmm. And then um, again, uh, we want to activate it now. We, we, are, we are not going to change the password. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, to make it simple, we are setting a, some sample password so that uh, we can right away jump on to yeah. start <laughs> using it. Yeah. Uh, this is basically Okta screen. Um, and then we are going to create uh, um, just like uh, another user, just a couple of users, just to showcase that okay. you can have a, like a multiple users, and then you can have a group, right? Where uh, op, uh, open such uh, dashboard uh, can be restricted to only that group. You don't want to open to everything, right? Because yeah, yeah. you have a lot of uh, uh, data in it, right? I mean, yeah. you wanted to make sure that you share the data whoever it needed with the people, yeah, yeah. each person that's yeah. You wanted access. to basically persona centric access, right? Yeah. You don't want to open it to all people. If some people don't need to access the data, you don't need to open it. Uh, we created a couple of users now. Now the next thing is we are going to create. Uh, we are going to create a, um, a sample group here uh, where you, we are going to attach uh, these two users which we created into uh, this group, right? Um, here we are creating a, a group name as Open Search Demo. And then you can keep some description. And then uh, the next step, what you are going to do, we are going to add those two users okay. uh, into this group. So like uh, we created a couple of users. We are adding those uh, two users uh, into this group. Um, once the group is done, uh, the next thing is um, we wanted to make sure that uh, we prepare uh, uh, Amazon uh, Open Search ready for uh, SAML configuration. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we'll do, we'll go back to the Amazon Open Search cluster. And then we'll go to the security configuration, and then uh, where you are going to enable here. If you see there, enable SAML uh, authentication. Mm -hmm. That is where we get the URL in order to configure uh, SAML application from uh, Okta side. So here we are going to create a SAML 2.0 application in Okta, uh, where we are going to give some name. Uh, it could be a open search or open search dashboard. For this example, we are going to use the open search uh, dashboard. And then we are going to map this, uh, this configuration, right? Uh, here, the single sign-in URL is uh, basically, you can get it from um, uh, Amazon Open Search uh, Cluster. Um, this is nothing but uh, ESP-initiated uh, SSO URL. This is the blog post which I'm referring. And if you look at it here, there is a ESP-initiated SSO URL. That is what we are copying. This is where you are establishing a basically a trust between these two. These two means uh, Okta and um, Amazon Open Search. And then uh, we have to provide uh, SP entity ID. Here, SP is uh, Amazon Open Search. Uh, Amazon Open Search. SP is nothing but um, service provider. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are going to map right how they both are going to communicate. Um, here, the name is going to be email address because that is the primary authentication to authenticate uh, users uh, within the Okta. And also, uh, we wanted to make sure that um, uh, we map their uh, email address as well. That is what another attribute mapping we are going to do it. Um, this is the standard uh, uh, attribute where you can uh, map it here. And then uh, we need to make sure that uh, we restrict this uh, access to the group, which we'll be doing. Uh, for now, we are just doing to um, making the mapping with the email. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, once email is done, then you see that group attribute. Uh, that is where uh, we are going to make sure that uh, we are restricting uh, access to the SAML application only that group alone. Okay. Right? So because all those users in the group will get that same We'll access. get the access. Okay. We wanted to restrict it to that group alone. Right? And here I'm just uh, putting some uh, matches regs where we are just uh, uh, putting to the, uh, the name, name matches with the open search because we created a group called Open Search Dashboard. Mm -hmm. That's the reason uh, we are putting as a open here. And uh, the next thing is, uh, once this is all done, um, we are going to the uh, we are going to complete it, and then um, we are we have to provide uh, uh, access to this uh, SAML application, right? Mm. Um, because we created application uh, SAML application. Now we need to ensure that who can access uh, this Amazon Open Search uh, dashboard through this uh, SAML 2.0 application. This is where we are assigning the group, right? The Amazon Open Search demo, the group which we created, we are assigning that group to this uh, SAML application so that uh, only the people within that group can access uh, Amazon Open Search dashboard. And I'm going to pause because you're showing us the how, but yeah. I want to know okay. the why. So why are we um, building the SAML Federation for these open search dashboards? Yeah, because uh, we don't want to duplicate the user identities, right? The, because we wanted to use the Okta users, which are already using it for different mm -hmm. AWS services. We don't want to duplicate it. Here, we got the metadata from Okta. 
and then uh, here uh, what we are doing we are trying to map the uh, the group name which we created in Okta uh, because in uh, open search also you need to put the uh, the group name that is what we are putting here that master backend role is nothing but um, your uh, Okta user group okay. uh, and then here a uh, few additional uh, parameters uh, which we are creating here uh, just to make sure that uh, it will go and uh, uh, identify the SAML application by using the group yeah. mm -hmm. um, so that they both can talk to each other. That is the thing we are just uh, putting here, a group attribute here. And then uh, the rest of the things, uh, we want to make sure that it's always uh, fine-grained access control. Mm -hmm. And then um, we established now the trust between uh, Amazon Open Search and uh, uh, basically Okta, right? Mm -hmm. So now uh, what we need to do here, right? Um, we will try to go and uh, see whether uh, we can uh, access uh, this application by uh, by using this, right? That is where um, we are going to the open search now, and then uh, we'll see uh, whether we can access. So this is what we are just seeing, whether uh, who can access uh, uh, this application. Now we'll go to um, Okta, uh, uh, I mean, um, we will try to authenticate uh, Amazon Open Search by using uh, um, Okta credential. So yeah. we are using Amazon Open Search dashboard here. And then, um, as I said, right, uh, Open Search is in, uh, Open Search uh, dashboard is in VPC. That's the reason yeah. uh, we are trying to get into the uh, remote uh, login. Uh, this is basically Windows uh, um, uh, EC2 instance. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you can create a reverse proxy because we don't want to open to the public wall because yes. it's your source of data. Security yeah. is important. We are into the reinforced. So yes, that's why we're here. Security is very important, <laughs> yeah. right? That's the reason. Uh, it's kind of a jump server which you can create a, like a bastion host kind of a thing. From there, you can access the dashboard. Uh, now, if you look at it, right, I entered uh, um, Okta user ID and password, and then um, now uh, this, it, it, it took us back to the open search uh, dashboard. Uh, and then you can add some sample data, or you can bring in, uh, you can ingest your application log data, and then uh, there are some sample applications here. Yeah. This is how you can uh, basically create a user-friendly dashboard for your uh, operational analytics. Because if you look at it here, it's a very nicely uh, sliced and diced your data yeah. where you can clearly read it, right? So now we look at the Okta. Uh, we are not going to look at Auth0 completely, but I just want to show how you can authenticate by using Okta. I already built the SAML Federation with Auth0 as an identity provider. So now um, I'm going to open new screen where I'm going to authenticate uh, Amazon Open Search uh, by using Auth0 credential this time mm -hmm. instead of Okta, right? Because Customers are having their own identity provider, and uh, it can be done with uh, any identity provider who has SAML 2.0 kind of federation. Oh, now, wow. see, now Auth0 screen, you see it. Yep. And yes. they are going to enter the Auth0 user ID password here. For Auth0, is also it, uh, similar. It authenticates through uh, email ID. And then once you uh, authenticate against your Auth0 credential, you'll be taken back to the Amazon Open Search dashboard. Mm -hmm. So that means like you uh, you remove all the dependency in creating a separate yeah. I am role, I am user and all. Because yeah. you want to make it simple for your users, right? They can just use your existing credentials and then uh, they can build the open such dashboard for operational analytics. And you see now it is loading. I also wanted to show another popular identity provider. I'm not going to show the steps. Steps are same, mm -hmm. but I wrote three blocks. Uh, another one which we'll take is Ping Identity. Ping Identity is another uh, popular external identity provider yeah. many customers are using. Now, I already created this federation, so we are trying to uh, authenticate um, open such dashboard by using uh, Ping Identity credentials here. And if you look at it now, it is going to pop up a uh, ping identity authentication screen. If you look at it, because behind the scene, what I did, I did the SAML federation between the ping identity and uh, Amazon Open Search. Look at here, uh, the screen which you are going to see is uh, basically ping identity. And then ping identity user is user ID. It's mm -hmm. not an email ID. So every identity provider has a different way of user ID. Here, user ID is the name. That's the reason uh, we are just going to put the name. And then as soon as you enter uh, ping identity credential, then uh, once you authenticate it successfully, once you have like a uh, correct user and password, it will be again taken back to the Amazon Open Search dashboard. So it's just, so, it kind of creates this, uh, creates yeah. it as like an agnostic way to yes. approach yeah. each identity provider. Yeah, what our identity provider customers are using, and you don't need to duplicate your user groups, you can build the SAML federation with the uh, Amazon Open Search dashboard. 
and uh, by using this um, you can uh, automate everything so that uh, your operational uh, people they no need to worry about remembering a lot of passwords yeah. right we wanted to make it easy for uh, a lot of customers and these are the blocks which i wrote it they are under architecture blog the first blog is about octa how to do it mm -hmm. second blog is ping identity and the third blog is r0 and this is a step by step procedure where uh, any customer can uh, follow this blog and they can build their own uh, SAML federation. Yeah, so it's not so. like you walked through all that, so it was very step-by-step right. -step process of how to, exactly. to go and test it and try right. it out. Um, so I know we're, we're running out of time here, but um, I know you had some customers that had used this um, that right. you wanted to share about. Yeah, so there are a lot many customers uh, who are using uh, OpenSearch, right? Mm -hmm. So last year sometime uh, we made OpenSearch as a open source, right? Yeah. Because Elasticsearch uh, changed their licensing model. That's where we have a lot of partners yeah. who are working towards uh, uh, enabling and adding more features into the uh, OpenSearch, right? And Oracle is one of the partner. I mean, they are also uh, building, uh, and uh, they have. We have a vibrant developers mm -hmm. who are basically uh, building net new features. And uh, our product roadmap is in uh, GitHub. And okay. if any of the customer, if you are looking for new features, please feel free to influence our product roadmap. You can add the features. Also, you can see what new uh, version of OpenSearch is coming, mm -hmm. and what are the features we are adding. For example, we have anonymity detection, right? Where you can see the any data is abnormal, right? Yeah. The machine learning is already integrated. Oh, and wow. then we are adding more, more to it, and then uh, we will see more enhancements. And um, we are also enhancing uh, open such a dashboard where you can basically drag and drop and create uh, more user friendly kind of a things, all right? Yeah. Uh, open such dashboard is basically it is a near real time. Mm -hmm. I'll give you near real time what it means. Let's say. <laughs> Your application is working today. <laughs> like, let's say you have Apache Web Server, right? You yeah. can collect the logs then and there, right? How you collect the logs? I mean, we have something called Kinesis uh, Firehose, where Kinesis agent, you can install it on your web server mm -hmm. that can collect the data. Uh, and then it can uh, basically, Kinesis Firehose can deliver the data to Amazon OpenSearch. Yeah. And then uh, you can build the business uh, um, dashboard, business metric dashboard. Yeah. And then you can see what is happening to your application. And let's say you wanted to track 404 error, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, which might be important to your application. You can create a dashboard for that. And yeah. then when double click on it, then you see which page is giving 404. Yeah. If that is very important for our, uh, if you are selling some product, yeah. then you need to take action then and there, right? Maybe a lot of customers are looking for that product information. Yeah. So yeah. that is the power of uh, um, open such dashboard. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's been such a pleasure having you here. Um, I have definitely learned a lot. Brian, do you want to take us out? Yes, yes. So thank you so much for your presentation. I mean, this is a super awesome tool. So stay tuned for our next session of AWS On Air, and we'll be seeing you soon. Bye for now.